I was sitting right next to a musician yesterday in your recital that uh, he actually told me that it has been a long time that uh, since he had last heard so many colors and dynamics in a guitar concert. And he was very excited about it. Yeah. And he said, I'm tired of hearing, you know, people playing flat, so I don't come to guitar concerts anymore. Yeah, this is a... Uh... But there's also a lot, lot of pianists and a lot of other Easts that play also flat and boring. And, you know, I've, I've been teaching in different schools. And in fact, I'm, I'm always thinking that teaching is just learning, 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 learning. Because every time that you're confronted with a situation to help somebody or to discuss about something, I mean, you're just learning. You're obliging yourself to, to consider this. And it's a problem. It's a big problem. The teachers or the colleagues, some of them extremely good technicians or extremely good uh, musicians to transmit or not to transmit, to provoke or to ask for more. And not to cook the people like in a in a industrial way that everybody is gonna be surely playing. And you go to the competitions, I mean you know it very well, and you you see this and the guy that's gonna get the first prize is not necessarily the, the most musical guy is the one that makes the average. And the average, what is the average? It's a boring average. Mediocrity. Yeah. And this is the most popular stuff. So people don't understand other things. So me, I blame myself, uh, or I could blame myself a lot, if I would not continue trying to make music. It's not that it's a crusade, that, and I, I am in a kind of uh, idealistic, I don't know, uh, like the Quixote. <laughs> But I do what I think sincerely. And it's very interesting when you start discussing with people that are playing normally like this, and you start discussing with, I don't know, five or six of them, there is always going to come out one or two that are going to, ah, ah, really, ah. And then there is another way. And if, I mean, how a person could express himself in something that could be really substantial if there is not substance? That's a very good question. <laughs> this is the, the problem, no? So the guys say, okay, but I'm practicing 14 hours a day. Fine. And what else are you doing? Are you reading something? Are you having, I don't know, friends or love problems or love joys or... You cannot sing about love if you don't know what love is. Exactly. And, and you need to, to do it, otherwise you cannot do it. Alfred, let me ask you about... Uh, you've been a, a, a champion of new music and uh, new composers, contemporary music. Uh, I remember you playing the Genastera Sonata even before it became a popular piece. So, can you tell us a bit how you see uh, new music for guitar? Uh, new composers, how do you look at new pieces? Well, I think that this, uh, I think I feel, I, I really burn on it. Like I think Sibovia was also doing it and other people, uh, Barrios, for example, producing himself things in his way, but producing, producing. I think that uh, the richness that we have been uh, receiving is enormous and we need to to thank a lot of the guys that were before us let's say segovia julian brim julian brim provoked so so many incredible things no? but also other people i don't know in the usa i don't know david tannenbaum david starovin that were specifically so much uh, let's say, stimulating people to, to work on it. But a lot of colleagues also, no? But the composers themselves that have been interested exactly in the possibilities of the instrument, of colors, te textures, and like, uh, I don't know, 
you name it, um, Britain, uh, Jolivet, uh, Ginastera, uh, Villa Lobos. I mean, incredible, no? Uh, and uh, let us say Elliot Carter or Leo Brau uh, or Toru Takemitsu or Hans Werner Henze or um, we could say so, so many names, no? But um, for example, here uh, in Brazil, um, Edino Krieger mm -hmm. has done so incredible, fundamental things, in my opinion, the Ritmata and others, and uh, Marlos Nobre. I remember that uh, Antonio Fioravante Crivellaro, the guy that organized the, in, Porto in Porto Alegre, one day he told me, look, tomorrow comes uh, Marlos Nobre and he's the director of the Funarte, and uh, he wrote a piece for guitar, and would you learn it and play it for him tomorrow? <laughs> and then he gave me the piece. I said, I don't know, <laughs> let me look at the piece. And then I look at the piece, and the next morning Marlos was there and I was playing the, the piece for Marlos. By memory. Momentous number one. And I adore it. It was a fabulous piece. And the, after came the other moments, you know, better than me, you, you yourself got pieces done for you from, from Marlos. And I always admired this guy a lot. I saw him playing piano and accompanying a singer that he himself sitting on the piano was taller than the singing, standing on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and the piano was moving like this when he was playing. And I always respected a lot this guy. I was very happy to work on his piece now. That is still 